Hey everybody, today we're talking about Photo AI, a relatively new product from Topaz. It kind of combines their sharpening, their gigapixel, and their denoise products all in one product, minus some sliders. Stick with me to the end, I'm gonna show you some examples where it works great and where it doesn't work so great. Let's go. All right, everybody, a couple weeks ago, I did a video on high ISO noise reduction, and I had diff nine different methodologies to do that or software. Photo AI was one of them. And at the time, I didn't like it too much. It did some stuff really well, and other things, it did some weird things. So what I decided to do was, I wanted to take four photos, four different scenarios, and see how it performed. I got some high ISO situations, I got some broad daylight situations, I have individuals, I have face masks, and I have multiple individuals in a photo. Let's see what it does. Some cases it does great. Others, not so good. Let's get going. So this first image is volleyball player. It's at ISO 5000, 140 millimeter, F2.8, 1 1,000th one of a second. Now I have already kind of edited this photo as far as colors and exposure and everything, but You'll note, if I zoom in, I did not do anything with noise reduction. In fact, I turned all the uh, Lightroom noise reduction off just so you could get a, an understanding of where this photo is at as far as noise reduction. Also turned off all the sharpening. So let's take this into Photo AI, which is pretty easy to do as a plugin for Lightroom and see how it does. So what you can do is click on the main photo or you can do it down below in the, the scroll and edit in Topaz Photo AI. It says edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. That's fine, that's what we're gonna do. And what it's gonna do is create a TIFF file out of that raw file and take it into Photo AI. That's really what you're gonna be editing. So it comes into Photo AI, it loads it up. It starts going through its AI process, subject detected. It detected multiple faces and what it's decided to do is if you look up here, up in the upper right hand corner, it picked a couple of faces out, one of our main subject and then a person in the background. It's decided to recover zero of those, which is interesting. It did remove uh, image noise. You can see that right here under image quality, it chose not to sharpen it, chose not to recover faces, and it chose not to enhance resolution. That's all AI, it didn't do any of them. So let's go up to our face and really take a look at it and see how it did. So you can see here, it did a marvelous job of removing the noise and cleaning up everything here. It didn't sharpen it. Let's see what it sharpened does. And not a huge difference. Probably that's why it chose not to do it in the first place. If we take it out to fit overall, um, I think it looks really good. I am really impressed. So in this case, Photo AI did a great job. It removed the noise. It chose not to do what is called recover the faces. Looks great. Now let's take it to a nighttime football game and we've got a player here. And as you can see, he is wearing a helmet. And as you saw in my last video, this is where Photo AI started to have some issues. Again, I've edited it it's for basically for color and exposure. Turn off all the sharpening, turn off all the noise reduction, and you can see tons of noise in here. So. Same thing, let us edit in Topaz Photo AI, edit with copy with Lightroom adjustments, and see where we go from here. Once again, I've got it at 100%. It's down here doing its, all its actions. You can see in the lower left-hand corner. Over here on the right, detected a subject. It's trying to recover this face, removing image noise. Over in the right-hand corner, you can see it detected a subject right here, uh, recovered one of those faces, which I'm indicating right here. It has some medium image noise. Did not sharpen for some reason. It decided to recover that face and it did not enhance resolution. Well, looking at the photo, I don't know that it really improved it. In fact, I could argue it made it worse than it was. Let's turn off recover faces. So interesting, the face actually came back a little bit. What I have found with Photo AI is it does not like face masks. So football, lacrosse, anything like that that has a face mask, uh, it gets confused and it doesn't like it at all. And that was the same problem I had with in the last video where I tried to use Photo AI on a nighttime football game. 
So this does not work well. We could save it as is, but uh, as you can see, if you would just rely on the, the AI, it wouldn't do very good. Let us try this one right here. This is an interesting photo. I'll show you the whole thing. So some daytime soccer edited. Of course, the main subjects are those in the center. Now, originally when I published this video, I cropped it down to just the, the two players in the center. However, I wanted to show you what photo AI does when it's confronted with multiple faces in a photo. Some of them very much out of focus, like this player off to the right. So let's take it into photo AI and see where we go from here. And you see to the right here, upper right, it's just finding things, detecting subjects. It chose to recover all four faces in this photo. It tried to sharpen a soft subject. There was not any noise, so it didn't do that to speak of. So sharpening, recovering faces did not enhance resolution. So let's go in real close on, and as always, every time you change it, it wants to uh, update down below, see how we did on our main subject. This subject right here, the player in the red shirt who's facing forward, I think it did fine job. Now, this player to her immediate right, or to her left, my, our right, I think her face has taken on a kind of um, plastic -y, as they call it. Let's go back to this other player here to the left. Now, even though this player was very much out of focus, it still tried to recover her face. But to me, I kind of wish it hadn't because people in the background, I don't necessarily want them in focus. And it kind of looks odd that the face is so recovered when the rest of them is so out of focus. So I'm not crazy about that at all. Now let's go to this person to the right. Wow. I mean, this person was way out of focus and it tried to recover the face. But as you can see, it created this weird, the, the eyes are just totally out and the rest of them are out of focus, but this play, they try, tried to pull the face back and it just kind of looks weird. So what happens here is you actually have to go into the photo and tell it, don't recover those faces. You have to, have to identify the ones you actually want to do. In this particular case, I just want that one main player's faces worked on, not the other one, because it just produces this weird effect. Let's do that. What you want to do is you hover over, all, this thing is, you know, says recover four or four, four or four faces. You hover over the faces and it'll identify all the faces up in the right hand corner. So what we want to do is actually select. Let's say select none for now. And then we just want to do this one right here. That's the only one we want to do. We don't want it to mess with the other one. Regenerates, it ceased making modifications to this face. Let's go to the right. Ceased making modifications to that face. And same thing on this side, it left the person alone. There's a little bit of sharpening in there, but other than that, it only did that one face. We'll go back to her and renders looks fine. So I would go, in this case, I would just go with what you see right here. Don't let it do the other ones. Don't let the AI try to manipulate those other faces because you're gonna get some weird effects. And that is the thing with photo AI. AI works great uh, until it doesn't. Okay, final image. This is the crop version. Let me take you all the way out to the original. So here is the original. Now I will tell you this was taken with a Nikon Z9, which is, has a 45 megapixel um, sensor, which is great. This was actually shot in, in DX mode or crop mode. So you can already see it's been cropped down. Now we've got a player who is, takes up a very tiny little part of this image. And let me crop it down even farther. Straighten it out a little bit. I'm gonna make it horizontal, take it over to her. And you see the cropping from the original. You know, the original was way out here and we've taken it down to here. It's what, maybe 10% of the original? Let's look at her face. So you can see the image has kind of fallen apart here. It's very, it's even there was a broad daylight, it's looking very grainy because the image just, you know, it, it's become now, it's become very low resolution. It doesn't look good at all. Let us see what photo AI does with that. Because remember, we've got gigapixel in photo AI and maybe it'll do something great here. Let's find out. So same thing, right click on the photo or in the uh, 
camera scroll, uh, camera roll below, take it to Topaz Photo AI, copy with Lightroom adjustments, and see what Photo AI does. Okay, let's go up to our face. So what is it doing? Detected a subject. It enhanced resolution by 1.7 uh, X, which is, it hasn't done this before. This is the first image it did that. Recovering one of one faces, removed no, it did not remove noise, interesting. Did not sharpen, did recover a face, and it did do enhanced resolution. So let's see how it came out. I gotta tell you, that is very impressive. That is very, very impressive. A very low resolution image, taken about 100 yards away, by the way, with a 500 millimeter, 100 yards away, and it has really cleaned up this subject really well. It took an image that I would have rejected as not being good enough and made it to an image that you could use. So in this case, I am very impressed by Topaz Photo AI and how it did it. So good on Photo AI. I'm really impressed with this particular photo. And uh, I know that in this particular case, it worked awesome. What conclusions can we draw from this? Well, first of all, Photo AI works well if you're paying attention to it and you're doing individual photos. You know, I like the bulk process in Topaz Denoise AI, and usually they come out great. 99% of the time, the photos are fine. Photo AI, I can't do that. I have to, it has to be individual photos that I'm trying to fix something in that photo. So in that case, I would only use it if I'm trying to repair an issue that I can't fix otherwise. The other conclusion I can draw is it does not work very well with photos with people with a face mask. So we need to avoid those. But if you're not running it in bulk and you're, you're managing these photos individually, Photo AI has a lot of things going for it. Now, if you want to try out Photo AI, there's a link below. It's an affiliate link for myself. However, if you already own the sharpening, the gigapixel, and the denoise as a bundle, you can get Photo AI for free. Either way, try it out, see how it works for you. I have had a lot of luck with uh, Topaz products and I recommend them a lot.